Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. And today we're talking about how to get your horse to listen all the time. Not just when you're at home, not just when the weather's calm, not just when everything's going great, but what do you do to prep so that your horse listens and why is this so important? I did a video yesterday talking about how to um, train at home. If you want your horse uh, to do something, practice at home. If you want to be safe, do these things at home. And I got a really great comment, which I'm going to read in just a minute, uh, about someone who had done this and had done quite a lot of work and it paid off. And I'll read that for you in just a sec. Um, because I like movies and uh, I think about things like this while I'm prepping. Um, last night watched the movie The Darkest Hour about Winston Churchill, which the movie was kind of boring, so I don't know that I'd recommend it. But in it, you hear his quote, his, one of his famous quotes, which is, Defeat is never fatal. Victory is never final. It's the courage that counts. And the reason I bring this up is especially I like the idea that victory is never final. And of course, he's relating it to uh, World War II. And we're with horses, we're not dealing with anything quite so dramatic as that. But to us, when it goes badly, it goes very badly. And you can get hurt with horses. So defeat is never fatal. So just because you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world, right? It means you move on and do practice again and get it right. Or get it wrong again and practice again. Victory is never final. So in this particular video, we're talking about how just because your horse does something at home doesn't mean that they're going to do it perfectly in the show ring or on the trail or when it's windy or when it's rainy or when there's other horses going crazy, when there's bees, when there's all kinds of stuff going on. And here it's courage that counts. And a little bit I'm going to change and say it is courage that counts, but it's the, the willingness to do what's not fun so that you can make a difference in your horse and possibly save yourself a trip to the ER, because that's what this video is really about. Um, so, the idea is that we need to practice this at home. That was the previous video. I'll put a link in the description when the video's over. But it's about practicing other places. And we're going to talk about a term called generalization. And it's the idea that we need to train horses to generalize cues or tasks. See, we can learn something and generalize very well. So if you learn to drive in a car, say an automatic, you can get into any automatic car in the United States and drive it. It is familiar. It could be dark out. Maybe you have to look for the buttons, but you're like, oh, this is a car. The buttons are the same. Um, or when you hear a certain noise. If you hear that same noise, like cars driving, you know a car sounds the same and it's a car, even if it's dark out, if it's windy out, if it's raining out, it's still a car. Humans generalize very, very well. Even children do learn very well, but horses don't. Just because they learn to stop at the walk doesn't mean that they're going to stop at the walk when the other horses are galloping away, right? They don't generalize that pressure on the bit in every situation means slow down. That has to be something that we teach them. And I'm going to go, I've got links to a couple articles in the description, and I'm going to recommend you guys read those if you want more information. Here's a good definition I found from an article by Julie Goodnight. Generalization. Horse takes a skill he has learned in one environment and comes to understand that he can perform that skill confidently in any environment, such as, in this case of her article, a horse show. But I'm going to say whether it's a show or a bunch of horses on the trail or away from the buddies. It could be anything. Rainy, cold, windy. So let me read it again. Generalization. The horse takes a skill he has learned in one environment, usually home, and comes to understand that he can perform that skill confidently in any environment. And that's something that takes work. Now, let me read you a comment from yesterday's video. Yesterday we talked about want to ride safe, want to be safe riding, practice at home. And so there was one really good comment that uh, was super encouraging and hopefully it'll be encouraging for everybody else as well. Um, so Christine says, thank you for this video, yesterday's video. Everyone made fun of me when I wouldn't trail ride my horse the first year I had him because I knew he was anxious and he was anxious 
I knew how anxious he was and needed all his cues to work well before we added a bunch of things we couldn't control, which is awesome how she puts it. A bunch of things we couldn't control, which is like the weather, the other riders, the whole environment around you. If bees attack you or flies, those are things you can't control. I was shocked when we went on our first trail ride. So she said she waited a year before she trail rode him. I was shocked when we went on our first trail ride and the lead horse freaked out and literally ran into my horse. I asked him to stand focus and do a few circles like we've done at home. He was brilliant. I was so happy I had taken time to over prep. On each trail ride since, I'm often shocked people have horses out on the trail that clearly aren't ready. Be kind to your horse, she says. Practice at home and prepare him. It shows you care and he will try anything for you. And I love that comment so much. It sums up like everything that I believe with training horses because she took the time to prep her horse and the horse succeeded. The rider wasn't injured. And it's true. I see other people's horses who are on the trail. And so it's not just about prepping at home, which is what that video was about, but it's about taking your horse to a trail ride, but not trail riding. And instead, what you should be doing is actually practicing at the trailhead, working on head down, working on mounting block, working on softness. At home, work on the days that it's windy and you don't want to ride your horse because it's scary. Well, you know what? You could be out riding and the wind could pick up. What are you going to do then? Train your horse to stop when there's excitement and the other horses are running around. Train your horse so that you are comfortable riding him at home. If you're not, what are you doing on the trail? Now, before anybody gets upset at me, I know people that say, well, my horse always rides better on the trail. And I say that's usually just, be well, one of my thoughts is it's because you're just too scared to ride at home and actually do the training. My guess is the horse doesn't stop great on the trail. He may be less spooky because he's on a trail and can't see around which is why I usually ride on the road because most of the time, horses, if they'll ride calmly on the road, trails are no big deal. Uh, we have Pamela watching from Memphis, Tennessee. Susan, still in Pennsylvania. Zach, smiley face. Nan says hi from snowy Maryland, and I'm saying hi from snowy Texas. Jane says hi from Orange, Virginia. Marianne says hi everyone from muddy southwest Virginia. Nancy says hi. And again, uh, we do have a lot of people watching, which is awesome. And I just love Christine's comment on that video because she waited a year to practice things at home. That is not fun for most of you, and I understand that. But I, I don't want to get injured either, and I don't want anybody else to, which is why I am going to super be advocating that you guys take time, train the woe, train circles, train all of these things not just on the calm days. Do it when your horse is keyed up in the spring. Train a good stop when it's windy and cold out. A lot of people are like, it's cold, my horse might spook, I I'm not going to ride. Now, I do advocate for you being safe, so don't, don't do silly stuff because I said to, but do be smart about it, but practice in the adverse conditions. Practice away from home when your horse is getting upset. Because you never know. I love how she's, how Christine put it in her comment, the things you can't control on the trail, like other riders and dogs. Do you know how many horror stories I've read about horses that uh, have an encounter with a dog and it goes badly? Or cows. I hear that one all the time. Train your horse to be good with dogs. You probably have friends that have dogs that won't attack your horse. Train with them. My horses, if you send them to me for training, my dog is with me all the time. And currently where I live in Texas, there's dogs that run at the fence constantly where I ride. So they get so used to dogs. And then I know that they're not going to freak out if we see a dog on the trail or a bicycle. If you ride on trails that have these things, practice with them. Get someone to come get your grandkid, nephew, friend's kid down the road to come ride a bike till your horse is okay with it. Generalize these cues. Train your horse to put the head down and not just at the walk. Do it at faster speeds. Practice it on the trail constantly till you have it there. Practice your circles. Practice turning. To be a trail rider and have a horse that's safe involves more than just buying a calm horse and riding or being a good rider. It involves prepping your horse, prepping yourself, knowing what your horse is going to do in these situations and that your horse trusts you. And also being smart and reading warning signs and knowing when to get off. But that's not exactly what the video is about. But it's still true. So, uh, Cindy says hi. Linda says hi from snowy Kentucky. Shanna says hi from Virginia. Christy says amen. All seasons, all situations, spot on. Cindy says, I'm working on liberty and training to teach the laydown. 
I noticed a big difference in my mare. What's your opinion on Liberty training with your trail horse? I love Liberty training. I love gated horse training because <clears throat> of the difference I can make and how fun it is to ride the gate. But Liberty training is my passion. I love Liberty work too. It's something that for me, Liberty is a mindset where when you ride, we make the decisions. We don't let the horse choose to run into traffic, right? We decide where to go so that we don't get hurt. <laughs> we don't let the horse run an, under a tree with us. But at Liberty, that's the time where you can give the horse a choice. He can decide to be with you. He can decide to leave. And we're okay with that because it tells you where your relationship is. Can you let your horse go in a big pasture and have him come up because he wants to play with you? That's a really good question, and I love when people take the time to do Liberty and work on that connection. I once heard a trainer, who I don't like, say that Liberty training was being in control of the horse 99% of the time. Well, I disagree. I think it's the one time where you don't have to control your horse, because it's the one time we allow the horses to make those decisions. Monica says, hi, from Pennsylvania, just came in from sledding right next to my horses. That's awesome. Kathleen says, I do that too. I think she means liberty to try to build trust and relationship, then move on to my riding. Perfect. Pamela says, so I was riding at home in my pasture in the rain. And my horse kept spooking. I kept riding and trying to keep him calm. I wasn't able to get to calmness that I really wanted before the rain really picked up. And I was forced to get off before I wanted. Did I reinforce his spookiness by getting off before he was fully calm? That's a great question and one that I've been hearing um, a lot of positive reinforcement people talk about. You can't either good or for bad, you can't reinforce emotion, okay? You can't train or reinforce emotion. So the fact that your horse is scared and you got off does not reinforce your horse being scared, necessarily. I would rather see you safe and get off than to have you stay on when your horse is super upset. Best thing would be to do is, I know it's cold now and wintertime, but when it's you get a nice, light, gentle rain, get out. Even just groundwork. Do some groundwork. Let him eat some grass and some grain and put him away and build on that. You did not ruin your horse by getting off when it started raining really hard and he was being spooky. That's fine. It's more dangerous to push it and possibly get injured. You could have maybe done some groundwork um, either in the rain with the saddle off or something like that, which in the rain is not fun, or you could have taken him into the barn or, or someplace and done a little bit of work, but it's not a big deal that you got off. Just try to make a point to train in the rain when the weather gets okay to do it, and you can be safe. It's all right. So again, um, we mentioned again, there's a link, there's a couple links to articles about this generalization. Let me, for those of you that just joined, I'm going to read this quote again of what generalization is. Generalization, the horse takes a skill he has learned in, a, in one environment, for example, home, and comes to understand that he can perform that skill confidently in any environment. We want a horse that will stop and put their head down in any environment. When the horses are running away, which is extremely gif difficult, to just stopping and standing and chatting with friends, which is less difficult. If you don't have these things down, there's a much greater chance that you are going to get hurt. And again, I know a lot of you don't like training at home or maybe don't have great facility, but you can go to a trailhead, you can practice this. So the, the way to do this is practice when it's cold and windy, practice when it's rainy out, practice when that somebody's taking the other horses and riding and your horse is a little bit upset. Start on the ground, stay safe, go to a trail ride, but don't go on the trail ride, ride in the the camp area or the trailhead and work on head down and stop and praise your horse and let him eat the green grass, especially the spring. When that grass starts coming in, no matter where you live, take him someplace and let him work, but let that reward be that grass. Diana says, hi. Pamela says, great, thanks. We'll do groundwork in the rain. Good idea. Yes. If you're uncomfortable riding in any of these situations, start on the ground, but be super positive. Remember, horses don't learn while you're working them, so lunging in circles and circles and circles doesn't teach them anything. When you stop and praise and reward, that's when they actually learn something. If you're watching this video and you didn't watch yesterday's video about practicing at home, please definitely go watch that. Again, let me come back to the quote I was saying at the beginning of the video that um, I just watched The Darkest Hour about Winston Churchill. Uh, and the quote was interesting. It's not perfectly, it doesn't fit perfectly, but it says, Defeat is never fatal, 
Victory is never final. It's courage that counts. And in this case, just because you train your horse to do something well at home doesn't mean he's going to do it perfectly everywhere else because horses don't generalize like people do, which is what we're talking about. You have to train to the left and to the right, and not every bit of water looks the same. Like, we look at water and go, hey, I can see the bottom. It must only be a couple inches deep, and we go through it. That might look very different to the horse when it's muddy versus when it's clear versus when the bottom is sand versus when it's rocky. He doesn't just see water. He sees things that are going to try to kill him in some ways, right? Some horses love water, and it's not an issue, but what about uh, other things that are scary? Rocks. People complain about their horse, like, you've seen that rock a hundred times. Go, but they didn't see it today or they didn't see it just now, and there's also the thing called stacking, which I've talked about before. So you wonder why your horse has walked past that rock a hundred times. Why do they spook at it today? Well, here's the thing. There's a thing called stacking. When different things add up to make uh, a horse go over threshold. So you have things. So that rock does not make your horse go over threshold. Cold and windy does not make your horse go over threshold. Back pain does not make your horse go over thresholds. Your coat flapping in the wind doesn't make your horse go over threshold. But when you add all of those up, that rock, so you have the windy, your coat flapping, there's some back pain today, maybe the dogs are barking, the horses are running, and you go past that rock, and that rock, which they've seen, puts them over threshold. Is all those things added up to giving you a horse that did something you weren't expecting. It's called stacking, and it's a, you can look up articles on it. It's a very known thing with animals, that something that's normal becomes not normal because of all the things that add up. A lot of times you'll hear about people talking about uh, stacking and over-threshold with dogs. Like, why does a dog actually bite? He's never bitten anybody before, but here's, like, you think about the things that add up. Maybe the dog's a little bit older and in a little bit of pain, so he's already frustrated. We know what that's like. When we're in pain, we don't like people bothering us. Maybe there were some little kids, and then there's more noise. Maybe there's a whole bunch of people around. And any one of those things would not put the dog over threshold. But then that little kid comes up and jumps on him. And that one thing, that one thing alone wouldn't have had any problem. But with all of those things stacked together, the dog went over threshold and bit. And the same thing is true for horses. Plastic bags may not scare your horse, but on a windy day when there's lots of people and there's a lot of excitement, that plastic bag can be the thing that sets the horse over threshold. And the more you train in these different situations, the better your horse is going to be in those situations. Your goal is to keep the horse under threshold and expose them to as much as possible and work to keep them under threshold, which is why I talk about head down so much. Head down can help keep your horse under threshold. Cindy says, what can I do to help my horse that pins his ears when he's eating? He's never aggressive when food isn't around. Wondering why he does that. He loves to be loved on in the past. I'm curious why he does it with food. Well, Cindy, I need a little bit more information on what you mean when there's food. Are there horses around? Is it just you? Is he in his stall? He's getting his food. Has he ever been starved? Uh, is he defensive? What does he do when you walk up? I would need more information to diagnose that. Um... Amber says, hi from Pennsylvania, been riding our girl Candy a Rocky. She's five years old and she can be a crazy girl. She loves being out and doing different things to keep her mind going. Oh, well, she sounds like a fun horse. Rockies can be super fun. Kathleen said, what would you do for a horse that is dog aggressive to help him adjust? He does not spook at them, but if they come at him, he will charge. I find that very difficult to train since I do not want any animal, be it a dog or horse, or want difficult, want any animal to get hurt in the process. Uh, Kathleen, that's definitely a tricky behavior. Uh, one thing, if you look at, I can't put a link up here or anything. I've shared a post, um, it can be difficult to train out. So I'm assuming that he does this with the rider and without, and the trick is without, because you can't control him at all. One of the things is I shared a video, no, an image, a photo, a diagram of different training methods, including counter conditioning. Um, I shared it yesterday. I will put a link in the description. And it goes through, let me find where it's at. So it talks about desensitizing and all the different ways you can desensitize. You can do systematic desensitization, counter conditioning, positive overshadowing, approach conditioning, stimulus blending, flooding, and suppression, negative overshadowing. Now, obviously, there's three of those that I don't recommend, but you could start uh, possibly counter conditioning, helping the horse think of dogs being positive, but we don't know what the horse's past experiences are. And you have to go about it very carefully, of course, because you don't want the horse injured or the dog injured. So definitely have your horse on the lunge line Maybe have the dog out and, but away, 
somebody else has it on the leash and start feeding the horse while the dog's there and then take the dog away, put the horse up back. And there's, you could read through it. There's lots of ideas there. The idea is to help the horse associate the dog with good things, which will probably help, but not totally cure the issue. Kathy, or Cindy says that her horse that's food or pins his ears says he's in the stall with her. He was very thin when I got him. He's the lowest in the herd order. That's probably part of it. He's probably really worried about someone taking his food. One thing you can do, um, now, does he pin, so the thing is, I need more information than what you're writing down. I understand typing can be difficult, especially if you're on your phone, but I need to know, maybe you should message me. I need to know things like, is he pinning his ears whenever you approach? Is he just pinning his ears all the time while he eats? What if you go 30 feet away? Are there other horses nearby? Is there a dog or a cat nearby? What what's the situation? Most likely it's not just that he's by himself. So if you're in the stall and his ears are back, you're probably too close. Go farther away and then walk in the stall and give him more food and walk out. Let him finish it. Walk in the stall, give him more food, walk all the way out. Go as far away so that his ears come forward. And even if you have to put like a stall, um, a door guard on there so you can see in there and then keep going in and giving him food so that he looks forward to you bringing him food. But again, if there's horses nearby, he could be pinning his ears, uh, at them. Laura says, I have a three-year-old fox trotter who, when off lead, is not respectful of my space and will practically run over me or anyone else. Are there specific exercises to correct this behavior? That's a tough question because I have that same issue with some horses right now and I'm working to use positive reinforcement to correct it. And I don't actually, because I haven't used negative reinforcement a lot like this, I don't have a lot of suggestions for you for off-lead other than positive reinforcement in using clicker training, because that's what I've been using. I know that there are other people that will give you suggestions for liberty. I'm teaching horses to, I'm using protected contact, I'm using reverse round pen, I'm using a target to teach them to back up, and it's actually working, and I teach them to keep their head straight. Um, and then that's when the good stuff comes. And so I have horses that instead of coming up and crashing into me, although my yearling is still doing that somewhat, she comes up and she doesn't run into you, but she like pushes her shoulder into you. We're still working on that, but we've made a lot of progress in teaching her to position herself correctly and using positive reinforcement to shape that. So I can maybe give you more information on how to do that, but using negative reinforcement, I don't really have any way to do that. I know there are people that train it. I'm not wanting to do that if possible, so I haven't really been using it with the horses that I have. Um, and I've got one guy that's very aggressive and getting in your, not aggressive, he wants to be in your face all the time uh, in, in a dangerous way. Friendly, but just wants to be right there and we're working on teaching the backup really well with the target, teaching him to position for the shoulder and keep his head straight. And he's like a little kid and that it's taking him a long time to learn, but he is making progress and getting safer to be around. So the idea for all of these things is that, that we've just talked about is generalization. So Cindy, in the stall, maybe you'll be able to make progress in getting his ears forward and him liking you there. But what if you take him out of the stall and do it in the pasture? You probably still have to do some of the same training, which is what we're talking about, generalization. Same thing with the dog. Uh, Linda says manners matter. Yes, so, well, they do. It does matter that your horse uh, gives you space and things like that. Um, which goes back to the fact that we want to train these things. And riding your horse before they're prepped is not the best idea. I'm going to read the, the, the story one more time because it was so good. So Christine commented on yesterday's video with her story. She says, thank you for this. Everyone made fun of me when I wouldn't trail ride my horse the first year I had him because I knew how anxious he was and needed all his cues to work before we added a bunch of things I couldn't control. I was shocked when we went on our first trail ride and the lead horse freaked out and literally ran into my horse. I asked him to stand and focus and do a few circles like we've done at home. He was brilliant and I was so happy. Also known as not going to the ER. Uh, I was so happy I had taken the time to over prep. On each trail ride since, I'm often shocked people have horses on the trail that clearly aren't ready. Be kind to your horse, she says. Practice at home and prepare him. It shows you care and he will try anything for you. And I just want to end with that encouragement there that you can do it. Practice at home. She spent a year practicing before she rode on the trail. Maybe you don't need to do that with your horse because they're already really good. But don't do it before they're ready. 
Don't do a show before they're ready. Don't do competitions before they're ready. And if you have an issue on the trail or at a show or a competition, come back home and work on it. And then work on it at the show when you're not competing. It's one of the best ways to train is to go to these fun shows, but don't ride in the show. Just train your horse to be calm around that many people and cars. Go to the fair or lots of places where people and horses are and distractions and train there without the without the pressure of actually competing or being on a trail ride. I hope that video has helped. It was a little discombobulated, but I hope it gives you an idea of what generalization is and why you need to practice in different locations and situations. And it's not that hard to do. You just have to be willing to go out there and do it. Thank you guys so much. Stay tuned after this video ends. If you want, I'm going to show you my video lighting setup because some people were asking about what I do, what kind of light source I have, and I just want to walk you guys through that on this page and another live video in just a minute. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay warm and safe. You got this.